Hi everybody, Mark here. Just catching up with you for the Sunday morning. Hope you're all doing okay. Hope we're all all right. I'm just going to um, share. I'm just going to talk about a subject in a few seconds and uh, I'm just going to share it with you. Maybe those of you who are not part of our church family but watch these I just got one of my old Bibles off the shelf. Now, I know this is my job, so I've got lots and lots of Bibles. <coughs> I've got a very nice one here that a friend gave me, Steve, which was really kind of him, an English Standard Version. Um, this is my first one that my grandparents bought me when I was young. Some of you have got these. Maybe you need a more modern translation. Um, I would recommend that. Some people don't, but believe me, I would recommend that. Um if we can get one to you, we'd love to get you one. If you've got your little red New Testament, Gideon's New Testament from school, get that. That's perfect. Uh, we can maybe help you, but we can get one to you if not. I want to talk. We've been talking the last few weeks about the big three in our church <clears throat> before this happened from 1 Corinthians 13. And the very last verse of that famous chapter that these three remain, faith, hope and love, <clears throat> but the greatest of these is love. And I don't have time in a video today to, to explain or unpack some of that stuff. If you want to come and hear us live sometime when we're back, we'd love to see you. And I can do that more adequately. But we've been talking about faith and I want to move the subject now and I want us to talk uh, about hope. So we've been looking at these three things and hope is the next word we're going to look at. So I want to talk today about spilling out hope. Spilling out hope. Hope is an amazing gift to us. Hope is an amazing gift to us from God. Hope, I'm not going to keep repeating myself, <laughs> right now would be the most relevant word that we might use. Many of us might use the word faith, put in our faith in, put in our trust in. But many of us, we are hoping for something to happen. Lots of conversations I have. Uh, we are hoping this will soon be over. We are hoping that someone will find a cure. Someone finds a cure soon. We are hoping to see and love and care for and hug those and be with those that we love again. We're hoping for that. So with that in mind, I'm going to start here in the Old Testament, Proverbs 13. <clears throat> the word Proverbs means book of parables. It's written by Solomon, who was the king of Israel after his father, David. <clears throat> if you remember David and Goliath. This is what Proverbs 13, 12 tells us. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled or a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Wow, what a powerful verse. Hope deferred. What do you think about that? What do you think about that when somebody who promises you something never delivers? When they promise you something, they put it off and they put it off and they put it off and they put it off. <clears throat> Imagine a parent who promises their child a gift. We've all seen it in the movies. We've all seen stuff like that or promises their child something. And year after year, month after month, that child is disappointed. They keep disappointing the child. Or the boss who promises a raise and just keeps stalling. Now, I've heard stories in the last few months and over the last few years of bosses who promise much <clears throat> and delivered little. And... Uh, I can think of a friend of mine who will probably watch this, but it will remain nameless, who was working hard for a guy and had their, his hours cut. And his boss turned up in a brand new Bentley and said to him, oh, so-and-so, come and look at my new car, this amazing car. Imagine the motivation that my friend had when he saw the car and the boss who had promised and promised and promised a rise never gave the rise. It keeps stalling. This can bring discouragement. I remember when we lived in uh, opposite to a park when I was before I was 12, I'd be 10 or 11. 
And I always wanted, some of you church people have heard this, but I always wanted a rally chopper. Always. And my parents didn't have a lot of money. And my parents weren't wealthy. <clears throat> and I always wanted this bike. <clears throat> and then never this bike. Oh, it took so long to come. I remember one day walking into the kitchen with my parents, smiling they were, and right in front of me, and I think it was about 20 quid. Well, 20 quid was a lot of money then. Some of you laugh at 20 quid now, but that was a lot of money. There was a purple rally chopper. And on the chain guide, it said, on the chain guard rather, it said, Hell Rider. Some of you won't like that. Could do nothing about that. I loved that bike. But it's interesting to me because you see, I longed for, I hoped for, I expected for the rally chopper. And when I had the chopper, I no longer lived in hope. So in Romans 8, Paul talks to us about, and again, I don't have time because of the video, about a future glory. Um, a day when God through Jesus will bring and restore all things to himself. The heavens and the earth, and this will include you and I, us too, particularly if we believe in him, will be restored. And in that chapter, it talks about as we in our bodies and as the earth longs for these things, it says this. And this is Romans 8, if you want to look so you can use your New Testaments, <clears throat> verse 24 and 25. For in this hope we were saved. But then it says this, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we don't yet have or do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Isn't that a remarkable verse? Hope that is not seen is not hope at all. Wow. Hope that is not seen is no hope at all. Longing fulfilled is a tree of life we just read. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, it brings disappointment. In other words, hope <clears throat> that is seen only lasts or hope this is experienced only lasts until the promised thing the rally chopper arrives that's why hope is such a powerful thing because we are expecting or longing for something how would i biblically define the word hope well i personally always taught it like this eager expectation and anticipation now, the word probably means to expect, expectation, but to eagerly anticipate and expect, to eagerly expect something. So when we live in hope, we live in these two things, anticipation and expectation. And the Bible tells us that we are given the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of those things we hope for, those things which are yet to come. I'm not going to read them to you. If you want to get your Bibles, like I said, off the shelf, 2 Corinthians 1.22 and Ephesians 1 verse 14 both tell us that God gives us a part of himself, his Holy Spirit, as a deposit, a down payment guaranteeing what is yet to come. Remember when you go and buy that car, you put a deposit on it. And then when it, when it comes to you, either in some way, shape or form, you've got to pay for that car. You've got to pay for that house. You've got to pay for that something. You put a down payment. You put part of it down. And we have that now already, the Holy Spirit in us. You see... This is what I'm coming to. Already, most of you are longing for this to be over. <clears throat> and we're only a week in. And Romans 8.25, it says it to us. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Now, that's really difficult. That's difficult for some of you to wait patiently for something. Oh, I've got to wait for it. Now, I've got people in my family and people I know, they can't wait patiently for anything. I've got to have it now. But there are things we have to wait for. We wait patiently for what is unseen because deliverance will come in the timing of God. And I believe that that's true. The word gift in the New Testament is the word charis, which means a gift. And that's where we get the word charismatic from. Um, but you see, hope is a charis. Hope is a gift that God has given to you and me. He's given it to us for this next season or this season that we're in in our lives so that we can live in expectant anticipation of all God's goodness 
through all, throughout all the trials of life that we will face, we can believe and hope and trust that he is with us. And we can do this how? Through the deposit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is in us. If we know Jesus, we know the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here's what we're told by God in his word to us, in the Bible to us. Maybe you want to have a look at this. If you've got a, a full Bible, you can look at these. <clears throat> Get the old Bible out of the drawer. Get it out of the cupboard and have a read. Isaiah 40, 31 says this. Those who hope in me, God says, will renew their strength. There's more to read, but I'm only going to read that part. Isaiah 49, 23 is a fabulous verse. And it says this. Those who hope in me, listen to this, will not be disappointed. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. I'm trying to be quick because I, I am a bit of a waffler and I'm trying not to do that. Final thought. <clears throat> At this moment in time, people need you and they need you to be living in and full of hope. I'm coming to the point. And they need you right now, your neighbours in your street, your friends who you speak to, those around you, they need you to be full of hope. Here's what Romans 5 says. <clears throat> it's very similar to what we just heard from Isaiah 49. And hope does not disappoint us or put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through who? The Holy Spirit, who he has given to us. That deposit which God has given, the Holy Spirit, is a part of himself that he has left with us until he completes everything he needs to complete. But we also need to do our bit. We also need to do a little bit more than just live in hope. Living in hope is important, but we need to do more. And I'm going to read you one more verse. And it's this verse, Romans 15, 13. And it says this. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Isn't that terrific? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may, this is the word, overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Here's how the ESV reads it. It reads this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Now that word abound means to overflow, to have an abundance so that I'm not just given hope to keep it to myself. One of the great secrets of the Christian life, the great secrets is that we reap what we sow. If we give away, we get more. I believe that with all my heart, that everything that God does is in life is about a seed. If you sow yourself, you get more back. We reap what we sow. And Jesus, what does he do? He sows himself. In John 12, he actually says that unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it brings forth many seeds. Who are those seeds? We are. Jesus had to die as a physical seed, raised from the dead. And then from that, the Bible says in Romans 14, he made us right with God through his resurrection. So I'm not just given hope to keep it to myself, but every person you see when you're walking, maybe when you're walking the dog, maybe when you're doing your exercise and you shout across the street to, because we're keeping our distance, every one of you, everybody you FaceTime, everybody you do this to, everyone you shout to, everyone you say hi to, spill out hope, overflow hope, I'm getting excited, overflow hope to the glory of God, overflow with hope. Let hope flow out of you. Spill out hope wherever you go. Give most of that hope away. See, that's the key to how we get more. If you sow hope, you'll get more hope. I've got so much to say about that, but I don't have time. Spill out hope. I want you to do that this week. When people are all oh, moaning, oh, it's all doom and gloom. No, no, no. Spill out hope. Spill out hope to the glory of God. Some people watch this. Some people watching this, you're atheists. You don't agree with that. That's okay. I have. I believe that you have every right to believe what you believe. But I am going to spill out hope that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in me. Let's spill out hope to other people. Let it just pour out of you. And remember what the Lord tells us in Isaiah. He tells us in Isaiah 49, 23. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Can I pray with you? Send prayer requests if you need them. 
send them to us. We'll pray for you. Lord, I thank you for every person watching. Encourage them, build them up, strengthen them. Not a time for pulling people down, a time for caring for people and loving them. Now I pray that those of us who have fears and difficulties and problems that we face, and uh, every one of us at the moment have some of those, I pray that you will just help us by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd reveal yourself to us. I pray that if we don't know you, we would get, maybe even on our own, and say, Lord, show me you, yourself, show me that you're real, and uh, help me to give myself to you and put my faith and my trust in you. Because we believe that if we hope in you, we will not be disappointed. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you so very much. Have a really terrific day. God bless you. See you soon. If these are encouraging in any way, please be in touch. We'll do whatever we can to help you in any way that we can. Bless you. Bye.